Okay, this channel is supported by my new online striper course and my online flute course, both available at a significant discount at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Okay, I've got a beautiful foggy morning here. Uh, if I had my way, every morning for surf casting would have fog like this. Uh, it just really seems to extend the bite into daylight. And there's often a lot of fog around in the spring. You know, you've got those colder ocean waters, and uh, yeah, it's like a fog machine. But all right, so that's what we've got. Um, and we've got a nice situation here of a channel draining a bay. And uh, you can hear those birds, and they're working over some. Uh, it seems like small sand eel. Honestly, it, you know, the fish aren't spitting anything. It's, it's hard to say, but I've got to assume those are sand eels. Uh, there's no blitz action or anything like that. There's no fish showing. Occasionally, there'll be a splash, but for the most part, uh, just working this water over with a pencil popper. Yeah, I did try a bucktail for a little bit, but um, the extra distance of the pencil was important because although there were some fish that were in close in, in hitting, and we'll get to see that, uh, there were also quite a few that were beyond what would be bucktail casting range. So the rod action is obvious here, the, the typical pencil popper action. Um, uh, you're not seeing the cranking of the reel handle, but what you're going to get to see on a couple of these fish is uh, that plug coming in close. So just focus on the speed of the pencil. You'll be able to see exactly the action that I'm putting at it, on it and um, the speed of which I'm moving the plug. And as always, I crush the barbs down. I, I do this on pretty much all my lures. Uh, really helps the, the fish to fall off. And at some point, I've got to hook my hand. I'm handling <coughs> quite a few fish. I'm going to mess up eventually. Uh, I haven't done it in decades. But when it happens, uh, the crushed barb is going to be very much appreciated. So many years ago, learning pencil popping, you know, you're, you're taught to hold the line between your thumb and forefinger when you're doing this, this rod action. And the idea is that will keep loops from forming on the spool. Um, so of course, you know, I did that and of course it works. And at some point, um, I stopped doing it and I'm not having any problem with loops on the spool. When I first tried it and it wasn't an issue, I thought maybe it was the particular reel or something. But no, I've tried it on different reels and um, rods and different plugs, and uh, I'm not having any, any issues. So, uh, yep, so you don't see me holding that line between the thumb and forefinger on that upper hand that's holding on to the, to the rod. Uh, I have to wonder whether that was really a monofilament line thing that just kind of carried over into the braid times, and um, it, it's maybe not needed. It certainly hasn't been um, needed for myself in a while. Yeah, and this is May, and um, normally by now we'd have some larger bass around, but they just seem to be slow to show up. Um, you know, certainly the water temperatures are depressed um, from what they normally would be at this time of year, so hopefully that's the issue. Okay, this clip will give a good look at the retrieve speed uh, without having to look at the reel handle. Just focusing on the plug, and you can see that nice dancing action, and yeah, uh, the fish love that. All right, the water depth here is about f between four and eight feet. Uh, really kind of perfect for top water like this because uh, even if the fish are near the bottom, uh, the plug is not going to be very far overhead, and certainly they're going to find it no problem.
And I'm sure you can see the sea robins swimming around right below my rod. Uh, wow, you know, sometimes it's five or six of them just like milling around. Uh, the water seemed to be inundated with these things this year, and it seems to be getting worse and worse every year. It's amazing no one has come up with a good commercial market to uh, thin these things out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do one more bass and then I'm going to make a small move and uh, get the drag screaming on some jumbo blues. Now as soon as this fog thinned out a little bit, this bite shut off like a light switch. Uh, and I'm not even talking about it like clearing up or anything, I'm just saying that it it, it, it just got a little less dense. That was it. The bite was done. Oh. Wow. I almost wonder if I have two on here. That was one. That was one big one. Now that's one I would like to have seen. Um, yeah, that comment about maybe I have two. Occasionally, uh, a blue will get stuck on each treble of the plug. Uh, oh, just one big one. Now would be a good time to come off, Mr. Fish. I 
you've gone through some battles. Wow. Yeah, it's a big one for sure. It looks like uh, back on its tail section there. Boy, something took a bite out of him at one point. Um, but yeah, nasty fun fish. So the last two seasons or so, the blues have been kind of absent. Um, but yeah, this spring they're in pretty well from one end of Long Island to the other. So, all right, especially at this size, I'll take them. Uh, these are a lot of fun. Wow, that was a jumbo. I have a feeling he ate the pole. Oh, he's got it in his mouth. There he is. Yeah. Wow. One jump. Good time to fall off. So this one's actually heavier than the previous one. Uh, all right, I encourage you to check out my online courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe.